Okay. Welcome back again, guys. Yesterday we played the bad ending, and for today we're gonna play the other choices. Um, love face or oh, which one? Should... I think I'm a better love the second one because the first one is a lady. It just speak. You guys, if you guys wanna watch it, go ahead and watch it. I'm gonna take this one. Take the case. What's gonna happen if you take the case? Do you want more dishes? We'll do it. We'll take. For a moment, everything will run. Their eyes and attention are solely directed at Hugo, whose eye have a certain glint to them now, unwavering and more determined than ever. Before anyone else speak, Nina stands up, slips away any stray tears from her face, and walks up. You will take it? Hugo simply nods. Okay, this time we agreed. Thank you, thank you. Okay, she is happy because we help her. You don't know how much this means to me. You only know it means a lot to you. We are glad to help Miss uh, Nina. Please just call me Nina. Oh, okay. Well, Nina, we'll do our best. Nina smiles at Hugo. And no one in gratitude. Her eyes renew with a faint gleam. A hope that may be things will change for her and her family for the better. However, before heading out, Nina reaches onto her bag once more. She takes out a small piece of paper and a pen and hastily starts jotting down, jotting down something. I best be on my way now. I will let grandfather know ahead of time you will be coming. 4970 George Street. Okay, I think that's her address. 4970. 4970. That's her address. Also, this is my address. Yeah, it is the address, guy. Guys, I'll be sure to greet you all when you come. Thank you. She politely bows to them and walks out to the office, a lady reaching onto her paws. Okay. Hugo watches from his desk as she goes open the driver's seat. Nana looks back at the office window and takes one last look. Okay. She is waving silently at him before finally pulling out the parking lot and driving off. Once out of sight, Yogo. Okay, he cuts out disc. He look at his clutter disc. Still messy, but presentable. I guess I'll have to sort these out later. Again. <laughs> yeah, you got another case. 5.30 p.m. In the car. From the ongoing downpour, the quiet hums of the car they sit in silence okay there is something they don't want to say or thinking about still miles of the destination you'll go constantly check the rear view mirror to see any passing car but it was only them on the road Noah who usually chats his ear off by now leans quietly against the car door as he looks out the passing streetlight, deserved and distant. He hasn't said a word to Hugo since they left the office. Hugo. He's thinking about something or about to say something. Hey, you're a lot quieter than usual. What's wrong? Ah, what a surprise. Have you been looking at me, Kaya? <laughs> no, you idiot. You just talk a lot. That's all. So, do you miss me talking? Just say it. Do you believe her story? What? Given all the things she told us, do you think she is telling the truth? Hmm. Yes, I believe her. 
or at least I believe she hasn't lied to us. But you know, I can't shake this feeling uh, that she's hiding something. Like if she left out certain details on purpose. Yeah. Why did she have to travel this far out of town for a private eye? Surely there must have been another far closer to her home than Alan. I just don't know how to explain it. Yeah, there is reason for it. As is expected of you, go. Are you making fun of me? <laughs> nah, your friend is just mesmerized by your observation skills. No, not at all. I'm just admiring your observation. Yeah, he was right, and I was right also. I didn't want to off offend Nina earlier. So I kept quiet until she finished. But her last name caught me off guard. Hmm. Last name? Have you heard about the Mortimer? They are pretty distinguished family that own an esteemed fishing company. Hmm. Well, they used to I believe. They have yet to name an Hair. What do you mean? Shouldn't we naturally go to Nina? It should, but I don't know. Huh. From what I heard, each time they try to name a successor, that relative mysteriously disappears. Hmm. Why? Kenapa dia nya hilang? Gone without a trace, or so anyone thought. The bodies would soon turn up. Month this after? What do you mean? And you know what's strange? All of them have been labeled as an accident by local news. What? No fool play. Just another unfortunate loss for the family. They've been struck with so many tragedies that, over time, people began to believe they were caused for something. Caused? I think it's some kind of black magic. I think I can understand why she didn't go. They most luckily thought she was seeing things along with the procedure just to keep the face. But deep down, they must have thought she had gone mad. mad. Oh, okay. I can't imagine all of this for Nina. And most of all, who knows what you will find there. Is that why you decided to come with me? Well, partially. I am more worried about you though. Me? Why? Think of this way. And a pointy driver. When you decide to go some pretty reckless shit, I'll be there to drive you to the local hospital. Yes, ugh. <laughs> Besides, two is better than one. Exactly. I was fine with Goldie coming with me. <laughs> well, have you heard that three is better than two? Yeah. Bigger the number, the better. <laughs> okay. Grumpy Hugo. Ugh. Mortimer Estate. 6 p.m. Passing through countless dark road and steep cliff, the estate can finally be seen beyond the evergreen. How big the house is or the mansion is, it's a big castle. Nestled away from praying eyes, it stands tall, magnificent, and classic. Truly, a rarity only afforded to the, to the privilege, and yet, with all its appallings, it looms from a distance. 
Yo go on who one can only have gas at the sheer scale of the manor. Sheer scale of the manor. It is its grand stature toppled easily over the dozens of houses they draw past. Whoa. Look at the size of it. I'd never imagine seeing a house like this in person. It's almost too surreal. Come on, she's waiting for us immediately after ex exiting driver seat. A sudden sharp pain weighs heavily in Yogo's chest. Grasping tightly at his coat, he begins to gasp for air. Okay, you go. His vision haze as he leans closer to the car, trying desperately to ground himself. Like a fish drowned out of the sea, he desperately, the air on his lungs escaping too quickly, bones as he feels his throat start to strain, drawing tighter the more he breathes. But he pain, his pains, heart, composition, to a feeling for more exorcism. Is it the house? No, something far more sense. Since sinister, mm. there is something. What is thinking? It feels like someone is watching him. Ini ada orangnya. A piece gaze fits it on him, like leering at a bug and waiting to strike. We will be together soon, Henry. Oh, what the hell? Okay, damned. I really I need to hurry up or else. Hey, are you alright? Noah calls out to him, snapping him out of his fixated. Galby notches his head against Yoro within. Okay. Did you hear that just now? Hear what? That voice. It was so close to my ear. Is everything alright? Oh, I'm fine. Don't mind me. I'm just a bit winded out from that trip. That's all. I'd be happy to make you a tea. At the very least. If it's not trouble, trouble, no, not at all. Hmm, no, no, it is the least I can do. Once again, the subtle uneasiness from Lina's surface. But before Hugo could get a chance to look further onto it, she walks up off toward the front porch without. Okay, are you sure you're alright? You sounded like you were chucking earlier. Talking well. Say it, I'm fine. Besides, we are already here. We can't back out now. Listen to me. I think you should. Noah abruptly cuts his lecture short as he notices Nana stopping by the front door. She stands by the door silently, contemplating something. It's just like before, but this time she seems even more unexcused. Whatever and is she tried to mask area become more apparent the minute they walk closer to the front door. Oh, no, no. I haven't been quite honest with you, detective. What do you mean? Just like before, as if carefully choosing her next words, she decided that in this situation, words are not enough. You'll see for yourself what I mean. But and with that, Nina entered the house, leaving the three followed behind. Hugo is about to enter through the foyer when he feels tug on him. Don't forget that I told what I told you. If something happens, let me know right away. Yes, you go. You have to let him know. 
you will be the first to know. Hmm. And with that, no one releases his grip on him. They proceed to head in, not knowing what awaits them beyond the door. Greeted with a brightly light hallway, Hugo notice immediately that it interior the interior is just as grand. Adorned with floral accent and antique finishing the house itself exudes the world elegance. A classic and rustic charm with the walls and flooring made from the finest woods. Hugo couldn't help but gap when he walked in. However, he noticed something even more distinct than the splendor. Behind the seemingly perfect veneer in an unsettling air breathes through Okay, the manner, leaving no room for doubt that the inside is far more terrifying than the outside. Hmm, please come this way. Bracing themselves, they entered the dimly light drawing room. At first glance, Yugo could not this and the cell hall studied at the corner. Only the only the sparse lightning from the window piercing through fraction. However, as they approached closer to the cell hall, Hugo now understand the reason of all nine and settling because yeah the guy looked like not the grandfather but the Yeah, a young one from the back seat sitting on the armchair is a very young man, not much older than Hugo or Noah. He is dressed modestly and shares none of the imposing presence of the manor. Hmm. No, rather such luxury does not even remotely reflect on the man before them at all. It is as if the flow of time had stopped only for him while the rest had continued changing distractly without him, drastically without him. Just like the letters, timeless, delicate, and generally out of place. St staring only at the window, the young man sits there dazed with a little acknowledgement. People are still motionless, like a dog. Grandpa, there is the people I spoke of. This is Detective Lauren, Detective Lauren, and the two assistants. They are going to help you. Oh, come on. Even after introducing to the head of the Mortimer estate, Hugo and Noah could not help but feel um, an The man before them is supposed to be a frail and older than any of them. And yet, here he remains forever, and changing forever, young. They've come a long way, so I'll be making some tea. Would you also like some, Grandpa? Unfortunate. Why his eye is real? It's green. He does not reply back, nor does he glance at Nina. Only fixates. He gazes only at, on the reins. He only gazes at the vein wine. I'll be sure to make a cup for you. She then timidly gestures. Hugo and Noah, beating more question the two former men outside. But before they leave the drawing room, Hugo takes one last look at the young man. There is an all too familiar air about Henry Mortimer. His eye, they are similar to his own. Whatever he must be longing for, Hugo knows it will never end. Well, what do you mean? Nine of that man. Hmm. Yes, he is my grandfather. The one I asked you all to watch over. I know this is hard to believe, but Nina draws something. It is an old picture of a handsome man with a slicked back hair, wearing the finest suits. 
the gentleman in the picture has a different air to him, one of the wealth and power. One of wealth and power. None of which reflects it all on the ground handy Mortimer. It's almost as if looking at two different people. This isn't much to go by, but believe me, they are the same person. Then why does he look so young? <laughs> yeah, why, Naina? Napa? It happened a few nights ago. Apa yang terjadi? Naina. What happened? A few nights ago, that's what she said. Oh, something weird did go. What's going on? Something bad happened. Okay, I like how they play the characters in this game and how they do do the animations also. Look, look at her. If you just stay still, the idly will the idly animation will close their eye. I was on my way to get a cup of water when I had a loud bug coming. Okay, I was worried that something fell over, so I went to check. Then I opened the door I found him collapsed on the ground. I rushed to help him up, but when I did, he looked so, so different. He wore the same clothes that my grandpa wore that night. Hmm. And his face, I recognized his face. He looked younger. So many things were rushing through my head at the moment, and yet I know he felt familiar to me. Okay. It is your grandfather. If you say that he is your grandfather, then it be. It will be. I know it sounds bizarre. The more I talk about it, but that's what happened. Hmm. That was also the same night I found that letter. It was next to him. A lady opened. I'm sorry again for all of this. No matter who I went, no matter who I went to, they either say something was wrong with me or my family. With everything going on, maybe they're right. The pools of water, the litter of blowies, and now this. I've been ignoring the signs for years and just blindly hoping things can get better if I try finding solution on my own. But that's not enough anymore. Maybe my family is really cause. Cause. No, they aren't. Causes aren't real. Detective. I think we easily get too involved in believing that sort of thing exists. In truth, the ones who fixate on it make it their reality. Yeah, I agree with that. Rumors, doubts, lies, all of those things are what they want to become real. Deep rooted emotions like that can't possibly be healed or fix it right away. Then, but like a cause, those emotions drag other people down with them. Hmm, you're right, Hugo. You should do something. Personally, I think you were caught up in all of this. But I assure you, you will see this throw for you and Mr. Mortimer. Thank you. Good, good, good. Now, our first party is to find out. Nina, the letter you showed us back at the agency. Do you have it with you? Oh, it is here. Do you mind if I borrow it for a bit? I'll be sure to give it back. Of course, but what are you going to do with it? I've searched everything with that letter and I still couldn't come up with a clue. Ah, I'll be using it as a reference or a guide if you will. I am afraid I can't discuss too much of the proxies, trade, secret and all. <laughs> ah, of course. I'll check upstairs, Noah and Galby. Check the ground floor. Got it. Before they leave to 
do their own investigation, Hugo grabs a hold of Noah. He leans in, close enough for Nina not to hear. To not hear. Keep a close eye on Mr. Mortimer and Nina. Especially Nina. I don't want her to be tracked any more than she already is. Mm, okay. So whatever happened, keep her face. Keep keep her safe. Hugo, you fine. But remember, you yell for me, okay? I know. Thank you, Noah. <laughs> I'm counting on you. Oh, okay, me too, boy. With the final note at the end, Hugo then goes toward the stairs case and heads upstairs. Noah start, stares for a moment longer at Hugo back before he disappeared onto the first floor. For a moment longer at Hugo's back. Okay, okay. He then turns to look at Colby. Well, it's time we get to work. Right, Colby? Oh, good boy, Colby. Investigation start. Yeah, investigation will start. Should I save? Probably I should, yeah. Oh, okay. Now what we should do? The object is to look around the area for objects to proceed to story. Mm, okay. So I guess there is... Use the arrow. Oh, okay, line here. Okay, if we can click on them, then there should be a line. On the top right is the head bottom click. It will highlight object. You missed. Uh huh. Okay. Oh. Oof, oof. Okay. This time, Mosimus still sits motionless by the corner of the room. His gaze never leaving the rain. Okay, there's nothing to click on here other than Mr. Mortimer. What about here? Nothing? Okay, nothing here, I guess. Mm, no, no, not the vet, but even got me now. What about the other side? Oh, okay, okay. Let's let's click on this on the phone, guys. An old Futuri Dell telephone looks like it's still good in good use. What about the vase? A delicate arrangement of violets and white roses. It seems to be fresh and fairly new. Uh huh. Okay. Um, nothing. Okay. No wardrobe. A large bookshelf stands close to the entrance way. It contains a couple of photo albums also. Mm, okay. Nothing here to. I guess. Are we done here? Nothing else to get. Okay, Galby. We still can click on you. Hmm. Frame decoration. The walls are covered in white sheets, belt with a thin lining of dust on top of each one. Hmm. Why? Oh, there are so many paintings covered in wall. Are there more like this all over the house? wrong yes my grandfather commissioned many back in the day but sadly he doesn't do that anymore why yeah why Nina I can't help but notice the painting are covered how come I did that I covered them up for my grandfather's sake for this sake for his sake Yes, he was pretty obsessed with them, you see. Hmm, why he was obsessed with them? There were times when he would meet church himself and would just stare, stare at the painting for days on end. It worried me so much that I had to cover them all. Since then, he hasn't stared at any of them. He just sits quietly looking outside. I see. About the painting, I also noted they all have a similar theme. 
they all had water in them. Hmm, that's creepy. I know this isn't coincidence since you've told us before, but if there is anything you know, anything at all, then please tell me. Noah, I can can I ask you a question first? Ah, oh, sure, go ahead. Do you believe in mermaids? Mermaids? I don't suppose I do. Why? <laughs> Casting her gaze, her gaze to the floor, Nina unexpectedly fidgets and tightly clasps her hands together. She then briefly says and continues. Well, there is this story, or rather, more like a fairy tale that my family has passed down. A fairy tale? Hmm, what do you mean? Well, yes, well, it feels like one to me. It was about a fisherman who fell in love with a mermaid. Okay. Every day and night, he would go out by the shore to gaze at her beauty. One day, she vanished, leaving him confused and heartbroken. Why? The time he would sail many seas for a chance to see her again. Sailing from coast to coast, new lands beyond and back, he would go. Not long after, fortune followed him all throughout his journey and made him one of the wealthiest and most highly respected in his village. Hmm. However, despite all of the wealth he gained through his travels, he never found the mermaid again. She would only be a dream, nothing more. And that's the end of the story. It doesn't end happily, but I guess there was a lesson behind all of it. Okay, I just never understood it. What do you think happened to the mermaid? I know it is an exaggeration, and yet I can't help but wonder. Hmm, it's hard to say. I just feel bad for both of them. Yeah, I feel bad for both of them also. To be honest with you, I'm not a fan of sad ending. If, I w if it were me, I would wish the fisherman and the mermaid could see each other again. Or at least, that's what I think. Yeah, that would be thing of, even if they weren't meant to be with each other. Yeah, I think so, at least. I wouldn't want to imagine going through a journey. So. It's hard being alone. <laughs> yeah, I know, it is hard being alone. What is it, Nina? A journey all by yourself. Yeah, I get it. Oh, Mortimer State, 11.30 p.m. Oh, it is already 11.30 p.m., guys. After searching vigorously through each of the rooms, he knows his finding would eventually lead him here. This is it. This is it. Hugo walks out the nearest lampshade and switches it on. Dimly illuminated, he sees the ex this extent of how lavish this part of the house is. From the customized window drapes to the vintage furnishing. Everything here exudes that ex extravagance. Uh -huh. But much like the interior Yugo has seen so far, he finds this one in particular. Blistered from wall to wall, a green lingered. 
it is as if the room itself is more moldering despite its preserved nature okay let's see if you can click on the, okay there is the chest we can click on a classic wooden chest lies at the foot of the canopy bed it looks still finally holds safe guarding whatever is inside uh -huh. okay nothing else to click on here oh, okay the bookshelf again a meticulously organized set of academic books ranging from non-fiction to geography are all in display however hidden away behind the vast collection the vast collection are some child children fairy tale all carefully kept hmm okay is there anything else to click on let's go to the other side i guess nothing here yeah nothing there nothing chair okay, okay papers what else okay picture ah uh -huh. A pristine peel white tea sit, sits patiently by, untouched and unused for quite some time. Ah, what about the book? A leather bound journal rests on the edge of the table. Its pages are torn out so haphazardly that the binding itself is starting to fall out. Some, someone wrapped it, wrapped. Uh, the papers scatter pieces of papers all forgotten lie waiting on the cold floor heavily etched marking of found gold all over the papers it is weird anything else okay okay yeah the picture atop of the the top atop the fireplace unblemished and unmarked by time hangs coyes or familiar painting of a beautiful woman floating on the water. Anything else? Nothing here, right? Oh, come on. What all of the click on? Mm, let's, okay, let's hit the question mark. Maybe there is. We need help. The help button. Okay, okay. What about here? Oh! The picture, guys, an old photo of a lost time, a sweet summertime memory of a little girl with her beloved grandfather. Okay, I think that was mine. I need to hurry. I don't want to stay here too long. Mortimer stayed. He searched for twenty minutes, but still nothing. He searched and searched, and still there is no sign of Louis. Do you go? Even if there is a fragment, a single thread to that person, to the real sleeves, selves, he could... Okay, but there is nothing. Oh, come on, there is nothing. Not one thing that's chaining him. It is as if the thought of Louis barely exists. Thought. What is going on? Please sense it that present from before but it's gone again damn it i wish i had more time uh oh no calm down it has to be here i just need to focus he pondered again retracing every step and every little detail hoping that he overlooks something yet all he knows is that the one tangled thing that connects him that Tether too closely to this space, and most of all, is to Henry in the letter. Words of promise, of love, all delicacy, etch it onto the page, but tainted with a powerful and dark emotion that has been festering for too long. Tain tainted? From the very start of all of this, you could believe that. However, Louis was, they were the one responsible. He thought he could find them and convince them to stop their haunting, to bring them 
peace and to move on. However, that isn't the case anymore. The unnatural thought that bonds everyone so closely together in this family is not the chaos of an angry spirit. No, it is something far more devious than that. Hmm. As he takes the letters out from the envelope, he notices a change within, bearing no foreboding for, for thread at the bottom of the page. It looked just like a regular or rather what he wants, a sad and tragic love. Hmm. If you can't come, then I understand. Things have gotten more complicated with your mother ever since she found out about us, right? Hmm. I'm sorry, Henry, for everything. It hurts to see you so torn up like this. I would never hurt you or drag you along with me. If this is to be our farewell, then can I ask you one last favor? Could you keep my locket? His locket? I know this is selfish for me, but I'd like for you to have it. I'd be happy to know it's safe with you. My heart will forever be yours, Henry. With love, always, Lois. So this was a true, the true letter. A small one emanates from the paper, warps, popping closely around his fingers. Quieter. Susan, that fragment Hugo was searching for. Lois, I'm sorry. You were also a victim in all of this too. Please, if you can hear me, I need your help. Without warning, the sound of a click to be heard across the bedroom, as if something unlocked itself. Hugo turns his head toward the sound and sees the chest. Unlike the other furniture, it is dark and rustic future have not been maintained well left to root on its own suddenly he stops the sound of a voice a sweet voice whispering to him beckoning him toward the fireplace Come here, my dear, sweet boy. Go to the painting. Don't go to the painting. I should save. Yeah, okay, let's save there. Mm, okay. I don't think this is a good idea, but yeah. Don't go to the painting. Don't go to the painting. No, stay focused, Hugo. I won't let it get to me. Preparing himself. He heads toward the chest and opens it. Inside, scrambled together, are bunches of notebook and small. Hugo continues to rummage through when he stumbles across an old newspaper article. A young man found dead by the lake. Oh, was that Louis? An unidentified young man was found the morning of XX. XSSX three days prior to his death, according to the police. Was it Lois, the one who died? Ruled as a suicide, police have claimed, claimed that the trouble used drowned himself. This certainly is a tragic news. An unfortunate event indeed, XSS comments. No claim of his body has been made yet. Lois. By the corner of Hugo's eye, he spots a bright glint buried beneath the bottom. He reaches for it. A locket of brilliant gold shines unblemished, retaining a timeless luster. Inside it, safeguards a picture of a young man with glasses, smiling brightly. This must be the locket that he was talking about. It is so pretty. 
I'm surprised it still shines like this. And this picture. Did he put this here? No, it's it might have been Henry. But why would he store it away like this? What should I do? Leave the locket, take the locket. I better just leave the locket, I guess. Hit me save. Yeah, I'm gonna put it there. I think it is bit to put it there. Hugo hears a distant and faint cry call out for him, pleading him to take the locket with him. Lois, Hugo is about to put everything back onto the chest when he feels a wet and cold sensation crawling up his leg. <gasps> it is the water. It's water. A pool of water runs his spread across the floor. A lady seeping onto the chest. What? Damn it, no. Suddenly, the light shuts off. A scream is heard, followed by a myriad of shouts. Yugi is about to call out to Noah, but stops at the side of Paul feet before him. <sighs> Looming over him stands a tall and ominous figure. Damn it! His face is sh shredded in complete darkness, a void of any human emotion. It appears a young man, but you will know that it is far from him. Now, this very thing is trying to imitate a human form, trying to be a human. He could only stare back. Paralyzed with fear, he is forced to watch the horror as it slowly creeps toward him. It's just like before, the sensation of someone staring at him from within. This is creepy, but this time it is drawing nearer, inching or ever so closely. The walls to call out to Golby uh, or Noah fell to reach out. Lodged in his throat, he struggled in pain. Lodged in his throat, okay, with his breathing shallow, he tries, okay, and then it stops. Okay, that's creepy. Looking down at Hugo, Felt with nothing but malice and contempt, it speaks. Okay. Don't get in my way. All of a sudden, the door to the bedroom slams shut, and entity disappears. Okay. The tension from his body finally releases its agonizing grip, and he cries, desperate for air. Gasp. His vision blurs, and his breathing is haggard. He staggers toward the door. That's good. He yanks at the handle several times, but it's tightly jammed. <sighs> okay. Noah, call me. To his dismay, he is only greeted with silence at the other end of the door. Ah, oh, come on, call me, Noah, where are you? Damn it. From a distance, he faintly hears the sound of Golby relentless barking as it gets further away from the house. Hugo rushes toward the window. He tries to pry it open, but just like the door, a heavy force prevents him from going to doing so. Like being underwater, his movement slowly and drawn out as if being dragged down by that thing. <sighs> it's okay. Frantically looking around the door, he spots a nearby chair. Without a moment sooner, Hugo grabs the chair and starts to strike the window. Bed by bed, the window cracks get larger, with each blow splinting off smaller pieces. Oh, come on, break! What the hell is this thing made out of? Still trying to catch the dream. He musters all the strings he has left for a final blow. Okay, I can imagine how he does how he did. Can we just break Alex? Okay, clearing out the remaining glass shots, Hugo peers his head out to see any rail. However, he discovered instead that the wall adjacent is covered 
in vain, despite how heavy the rain has drastically become. He reaches out for it, grabbing a handful of veins. Carefully, he climbs out the window, gripping tightly and making sure he doesn't look. Yet to his luck, the patches of bane, he clutches thought to tear away from the wall. Tear away. Out of desperation, he struggled to find his grip on another, but fell behind. Slip. Shit. <laughs> okay. Clambering wildly as he loses grip on the ivy, he crushed, lands down onto a thick of bushes. Into a thicket of bushes. A good thing. I falls out of him. He haves uncontrollably, trying to even out his breathing. But even that is laborious. An immense pain spread across not only his back but his throat. Okay. God, I'm getting too old for this. <laughs> okay. Although his body screams out in pain, he falls himself up. There is still time. I can do this. I have to do this. With staggering feet and haggard breathing, he makes his way to the place where it's all begins. To the lake where this tragedy starts and ends. Lake. For the time it is already. It was in midnight. Finally entering the park, Hugo calls out to Colby and Noah. Colby, Noah, where are you? He hears finally the sound of barking and itches of people yelling in distance. He rushes toward the itches, guiding him through. With his head racing and blood rushing to his head, he finds his way to the lake. Growing closer, he sees Nana giving chase to her grandfather. Unfortunately, she doesn't get too far. As Noah stops her. Grandpa, stop, Grandpa! Let me go, my grandpa is. No, Nina, it's dangerous. You'll we'll get all too. I don't care. I don't want to lose anyone anymore. And at that instant, Hugo trudge against the water, pursuing in Nina's stead. Oh, okay, he can save him. You go. No, don't. Not even though pains and water's cries of his partner could make him turn back. Determined, he forged ahead, nearing the deep and end of the lake. He sees Henry Mortimer gazing directly at him. He looks even more frail and disheveled. Than before. It is if all the life he lived up until this point he began to fray, draining everyone of himself and surrounding it all to the lake. Before Henry could lean in, Hugo reaches out and turns. Mr. Morton, listen to me. Nothing is waiting for you down there, but please come back to the shore with me. Motionless and unresponsive, he stares deeply into the water. The gaze, the gas over his eyes is still obscure and persistent. There are so many things we cannot afford to lose in our life. And you, one of them. To Nina, you are all she left. She needs you, Mr. Mortimer. He good felt it. A slight chill from her arm. As if type of Nina. He's he slowly turned to face Yogo. Nina. However, just as cool and violent as the storm Henry chucks away, wrenching his arm away from Hugo help from him. No no no. All of this is my fault. If only I got to lay sooner, then none of this would have happened. It was waiting for me. He was waiting for me. He was patient with me. And yet, for all the things he done, I chose my family over him. He's gone because I didn't pick him. Henry back 
farther away from the shoreline. Mr. Mortimer, his manic eyes never straying away from Hugo as he keep his distance from him. Please, I'm sorry. I was the one who dragged you onto this. You deserve so much more. I know I wished. Henry struggles over his words. He clasps tightly to his shirt, his throat dry and taut from all that he was, but he has battled up. From all those repressed and silent years of just waiting, waiting for this cause to finally take him, I wish I had gone with you that night, Louis. Sir, even if you still come in that wish, I, I wouldn't resolve anything. It wouldn't resolve anything. Not for you or Louis. Yeah, man. I've had enough. Louis is waiting for me. He's waiting for me to come home. Uh oh. Before Hugo could reach out for Henley Hand, he disappears onto the into the water. Mr. Mortimer, without hearing the uncaused cries and desperate pleas, Hugo dives after him. Onto the abbeys, into the abbeys. Oh, fortunate. Plunging into the icy water, Hugo feels chocks raining rampant throughout his body like a spike continuously piercing from his leg to the tip of his fingers fierce fiercely and unyielding his chest tightens and his heart traces as he began to kick his leg oh, okay hoping whichever way he goes he will find a way to handle his final his way to handle his way to your people he is finally a figure slowly descending into the abyss. As he finally gets closer to Henry, a long snake like arm stretch across the void and grab Hugo's neck. Oh. Violently squeezing all the air out from him. He tries desperately to wrench its hand away. But with each struggle Hugo movement began to weigh heavily and heavier, heavier and heavier. Water falling into his lungs as his vision starts to blow. The cold numbness spreads. Tired and motionless, he watches on his own at the abbey, swallowing, embracing him. Let's share this happy ending together. <gasps> okay, that we he feels nothing. His body Wayless and floating for all, who knows how long. It could be so very, very cold. How long has it been since he felt this? This empty feeling of just not being here or anywhere. It is comforting and nostalgic. Maybe, maybe just. I think this is for the best. Oh no, it's far from over, Hugo. Uh, okay, who is that? After all, you said yourself. yourself. Seeing the things you do come with a price, right? I know what a hefty price has been paid for your stupid little blunder. Okay, so get up, Yoga. We are far from having a happy ending. What? Yoga! But Yoga's eyes shut right open, his vision dis oriented and a blur as he tries to focus on Noah's voice a fallen tide burst within him as he coughs out the remaining water on his lung he can feel Noah's hand rub against his back ensuring him and checking to see if he is fine okay but deep down there is something far from Concerning. Where is Mr. Mortimer? But I'm sorry, Hugo. What? I tried going back into the water after I fetched you, but the paramedics stopped me. They told me it was too cold and dangerous to head back in. No, it can't be. I'm sorry, Hugo. No, please. 
God, no. He couldn't hear. His body trembled as his hand clasped tightly together in a prevent prayer, wishing for a miracle to happen for them. To have Mr. Mortimer return to them finally safe from harm. Oh, come on. But for this silence, which this small, glaringly impossible wish no one could have, there was no kindness in sunrise, only the gut wrenching wells for a woman by the sure pleading to Inikov who can save her grandfather. But no matter how many who tried to search through the water, they wouldn't be able to find him. For there was no one left to save any more. Oh, just a wish it washed up for cutting tower of a man and his mother. As Hugo tried to stifle his cry and soothe a lump lodges deeply, deeply in his throat, he hears it a laugh, a crow, and he heartless laugh echoes from across, mocking him, causing him a holy and merciless victory for this cause. A cause. It was a cause, after all. Bad ending. A mammy tells. Wow. Mammy tells. Okay, this was the ending for you guys. And I hope I can see you in my next video. Bye bye.